Okay, guys, we are moving on to the last question of this paper. Again, it's another probability question. These questions, as I said, sometimes cause a lot of um, sort of uh, upheaval with students because they don't know what's going on. But let's just approach this and see what they want us to do. Okay. So it says events A and B are independent. Now, it's important to understand words in probability, right? Because they mean things. Okay, words always mean something. But in probability, they're very important to understand the jargon here. So independent, right, means that they don't depend on each other, okay? When, when the probability of A occurs, it does not affect the probability of B occurring. So this is the relationship that we're saying. We're saying the probability of A and B, right, equals the probability of A times by B. That is the definition of independence in a mathematical format. If you do not recognize this, I would really advise that you go back to your notes and look at this, okay? That is basically when they tell you the word independent, you should be thinking this formula. You aren't given this, right? But you must use it because it helps us in this case. Okay, then they give us the probability of A equals 0 0.4 and the probability of B equals 0 0.25. So they've given us a lot of information here. So let's just write some of it down, okay? Um, so we know the probability of A equals 0 0.4, the probability of B equals 0 0.25, and we know the probability of A and B, this little union sign here, Right? I mean, it's not union, sorry, intersection. Um, it's just like a little N. It looks like a little N. It's just a symbol we use to show um, that that means and equals the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay? So, let's just sub those numbers in. 0 0.4 times 0 0.25. So, that gives us 0 0.1. So, now we have three different probabilities within the sample space. Let's see what they asked us. It says represent the given information on a Venn diagram. Now, when you see the word Venn diagram, you should be thinking circles and a rectangle, okay? So you, sometimes those circles can be separate, which is exclusive, like mutually exclusive. Sometimes there's an intersection, right? And that is what we have to establish here, right? But here we know there's an intersection because we've just calculated it, right? Okay, so we know that those circles are going to be overlapping. Let's now draw the Venn diagram. Right, because it's asked us to indicate in the Venn diagram the probabilities associated with each reason, region. So don't be like me, rather draw with a, George with a ruler, but I'm just going to do it a little bit freehand. Okay, there's one circle and there's two circles. I'm going to name that circle A and that circle B. Now, the intersection in the middle we know is 0 0.1. Okay, but what is the probability? The probability of A, right, equals 0 0.4. But the probability of only A sits, and let me use some color so you can see, it only sits over here, right? It's outside of that intersection. So it's going to be 0 0.4 minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.3, okay? So 0 0.3 is the probability of only A, okay? Let's now do the probability of only B, which is the moon shape on the other side, right? So we know the probability of B equals 0 0.25. But we now want to strip out the intersection, right, of A and B. So we're going to say 0 0.25 minus 0 0.1. So it gives us 0 0.15, okay? Now, we've now drawn the circles, but if you look at this and you add these all up, right, let's add all of the probabilities that we currently have in our diagram up together, okay, and we see that it equals 0 0.55, but we know that probabilities of a sample space should always equal 1, right? You want it always to equal 1, so we know that if we take away the probabilities we have, there is the 0 0.45, which is sitting outside of this A and B, right? These A and B events. So then now if we add all of those together, we see that our rectangle encapsulates, that's why we put it there, right? It borders our event, right? Which is now equaling one. Okay, perfect. So let's now go and figure out, I think that's all they've asked us actually for this question. Yeah, perfect, that's all they've asked us. 
So now let's go on to 11.1.2. Okay. So now 11.1.2 says the probability, let me just show you so that you're not, not just believing me, you can see it yourself. The probability of A or not B. This or is so important, guys. As I said, words and probability are very important. So I'm saying you can have A, you can have anything in A, right? Or not B. But you can't just have only B, okay? That's what it's saying. So it's basically saying we can have, let me see if I can get a different color. We can have any of A. So we can have any of A. So this includes the intersection, any of A or not B. But we can't only have B. Okay, so it's very important because if you understand the words that they use in probability, you can understand what they're asking. Let me just put this here so that you can see. So it's a probability of A plus the probability of not A or B, right? So it's basically, this is how we're going to write it. Okay, so I'm saying basically, you can have anything in A, or you can have something that is not B. So it's 0 0.85. Okay. Another way that you could write this is you could say 1 minus the probability of only B. Right. So here, only B means that little pink sickle. Right. So it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.15, which gives us 0 0.85. Okay, so that's the way you must go about it. As I said, this or is very important. When I'm saying and, I want both of those things. When I'm saying or, it can be like, it's like, do you want, it's like, I want a milkshake and fries. You have to have both of those things, right? When I say to you, you can have a milkshake or fries, it means you can pick between them, right? So here I'm saying, pick between them. You have an option. But when I say and, right, like what we did over here with independence, it's both of them together. Very, very important. Okay, let's now look at 11.2. Now, 11.2 is a really cool question. I think it's quite cool. I love these sort of like different like combinations of things. Sorry, my hair is like falling everywhere. Um, I really like this. So let's just jump in and see what we can do. It's for six marks, right? So this question, the six mark question is more than both the questions we've done before this combined, okay, from like a marks perspective. So this is one we want to get right, okay? Motors Incorporated manufacture cars with five different body styles, four different interior colors, and six exterior colors, as indicated in the table below. Okay, so they've given us a little table. That's fine. Then it says the interior color of the car must not, this is so important, must not be the same as the exterior color. Okay, so basically like you can't have a black car with a black interior. We can't have a blue car with a blue interior. It can't be all matchy matchy in the hood. Okay, it has to be different. So then it says Motors Incorporated wants to display one of each possible variation of its cars in their showroom. Okay, so they want to have like a certain style, right? Like maybe a hatchback, a hatchback, sure, a hatchback with like a black exterior and a gold interior or a sedan with a red outside and a white inside, right? So it's basically just going through here and seeing all the different options you can have, remembering that we cannot have interior color matching exterior color. We're not allowed that, okay? Then it says, the showroom has a floor space of 500 meters squares. 100 meters squared and each car requires five meters squared is this possible so basically they're saying work out how many different cars you can get from this different array and then figure out basically multiply that by five the area of each car right so just find out how much area you'll need for all these different type of cars and figure out if 500 meters squared is sufficient for all these cars okay so let's first of all look at how many alternatives we have, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to do all the different styles like this. I mean, all the different options like this. I'm gonna go a body style times by a color, and then you have an exterior, okay? So let's see how we can do that. So we know we have five body styles, okay? We have four interior colors, and we have six exterior colors. Okay, we know that. But we know within this, there's a little bit of replication because you see here that there's blue and blue. So we can't have that. And we can't have red and red, right? So we can't have that at all. 
So let's, let's do this. Let's maybe run through all of these different colors and see how many exterior colors we can match to them. Okay, so let's start with blue. So we're saying blue interior. Okay, so I'm saying a blue interior can have five body styles. I can only have one color interior because I'm saying it can only be blue. And how many exterior colors can it have? It can have one, cannot have blue, two, three, four, five. So it can have 20, there'll be 25 variations where blue is exterior, okay? Let's now try with gray as interior. Sorry, it will have 25 different options with blue being the interior, okay? Let's now do gray interior. So now we basically, we've done this blue, okay? Let's go for gray. Gray can have five body styles, can only have one interior, right? Because we're saying all of these ones have to be gray. Then let's see how many exteriors it can have. It can have all of them, right? Because none of these options are gray, right? Which means that we don't have to exclude any of them. So that would be 30, okay? Let's now do black interior, okay? Black interior. So we've done blue and we've done gray. So now my black interior, I can again, right, have, oh, sorry, let me, Make sure you can see what I'm doing there. I can again have five body styles, right? I can only have one interior color because I've said in this case it has to be black. And I can have I can have all six exterior colors, right? Because what we see here is none of the exterior colors is also black. Okay? So we can have six there. Okay? Perfect. So we're getting through all our different options quite well. We only have red left. So we have red interior, okay? So we have five body styles, right? Because there's no, there's no restriction on the body styles. There's only a restriction on the interior and the exterior colors matching, okay? So the red interior, five body styles, one interior style, because we just said it's red. Oh, sorry, my, my, my watch is speaking to me. Okay, so we have five body styles. We have one interior color, okay, which we said is red. And then how many exterior colors can we have when we have a red interior? We can only have five because we cannot have red. Okay, so we have 25. So now our total number, total number, let me make sure you can see what I'm saying. Total number of options or total number of car variants, I'm gonna say that. So basically the different varieties is gonna be 25 plus 30 plus 25 plus 30, which is 110, okay? So there's 110 different cars that they want to put in their showroom, okay? So that's all good and well, but we haven't finished with our question. So now we know that there's 110 variants, okay? We know that, but let's go back to what they asked us to answer. They said each, the showroom has this much space and each car requires a floor space of this. So it says, is the display possible? Okay, now we know there's 110 variants. We know that each needs five meters squared. So we say 110 times five, so they need 550 meters squared, but they only have 500 meters squared, okay? So display is not possible, okay? It's not possible because they don't have enough space, right? If they wanna show all variants of cars, they're either going to have to get some more space or they're gonna to have to reduce the number of variants, okay? So this is all about understanding how this works. What I said here is I said the interior color cannot match the exterior color. So I started by fixing the interior color and saying if I have blue, how many options do I have? If I have gray, how many options do I have? And in that way, I broke down the question, made it more accessible, and look, it was really easy to get to the answer, right? And now we're done, and we finished the whole paper, right? And we have done really well. Let us now move on to paper two. I hope that was helpful, guys.
Cheers.